Here we go. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Emma, and I am a field marketing manager here at Certiport. And we're so happy to have you join us for our second Certified Academy design webinar. So feel free to drop in the chat and let us know where you're joining from and what courses you teach. This session is being recorded, so you'll we'll have uh, receive a link to the full recording via email after the presentation. Because this is a collaborative breakout, uh, we encourage you to ask questions. However, during the presentation, please ensure that you're muted to minimize any background noise. And feel free to send questions through the chat as they come up. So this session uh, is being sponsored by the Adobe Certified Professional Certification Program. The future belongs to those who create. And whether it's to inform, persuade, entertain, or inspire, success in the digital age means communicating in visually rich and interactive ways. With a firm grasp on the world's most powerful creative tools, Adobe Certified Professionals are ready to make their mark. Today, we are all here to get practical advice for teaching graphic design, and we're so privileged to be learning from Jenny Moses. Originally from Trinidad and Tobago, Jenny has lived in, Os I'm probably going to say things wrong, so apologies, Osceola County, Florida for over 22 years. She first stepped into Valencia's campus in 2000 as an international student. There, she earned an associate in graphic design. While working for Apple, she earned a bachelor's in business from USF and a master's in art education from Boston University. These experiences led to jobs at Apple, Microsoft, and eventually her own design studio. Jenny currently teaches at Valencia College and has found genuine purpose in mentoring future graphic and web designers through Valencia Graphics Program. She is now building a program at Cahosa Caliga High School and shares real-world experiences with her students. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Jenny to get us started. Hi, hi everyone, how are you? Let me, I'm um, going to, this will stop the other sharing. Can I share my screen, Emma? Yeah. Okay. Sure, so I am going to share, um, and you guys can let me know if you can see the presentation. Can you see there? What we can see your screen. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm not going to change the slides here. I'll just leave it like that, just for sake of easiness, sake me moving it around. So hi, everyone. I'm Jenny. Um, and so I am a instructor at Valencia. And um, we are, I'm going to, I changed up a little bit how I'm going to do this presentation tonight, because I know a lot of us teach, you know, all the software and we teach different things. Um, but I'm going to actually do a snippet of um, what I'm going to be uh, showcasing at Certified this year um, and kind of what we do to push the students to the limits and really kind of get get you going and maybe get your juices flowing, you know, with the projects. And that way you can reach out to me if you want, you know, to, to share some best practices. So I, I have a little video here. <laughs> Hopefully this makes you guys, you know. <laughs> like what is rigor, right? We kind of don't know and the students, you know, like, okay. But you know, in today's world, right? This is kind of what they relate to. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop that there. So this is kind of like, you know, you have old school way of thinking and the new school, you know, the kids are on all these different social media sites. And so we really want to try and meet them where they are. Um, so this is my fifth year at Tohopeka Liga High School, and we are the Valencia Graphic Design Program. It's the number one program in Central Florida. And so five, well, this is our fifth year. So five years ago, I was at Valencia full-time. I left a six-figure job at Microsoft, and I 
I wanted to follow my passion, right? I wanted to teach. And so, um, because I've been at Valencia teaching part-time for like 15 years. And so then I went on this team, we were opening up a new STEAM high school in the school district, Osceola School District. And um, STEAM meaning there was, a, it's a STEM school with the arts involved. So we had all the arts programs, graphic design, you know, art, uh, theater, everything, it, you know, accumulated in arts was at this school. And um, so we opened the school in 2018. Um, and, you know, anytime you're opening a new school in a school district, and I never taught high school, they asked me to come over to the school district so we can teach the program. And so within the four years, I'm kind of just going to give you a quick snapshot here. Within the four years of the program, we opened the school and, you know, different types of learnings. Then we went into COVID in the second year, right? The first year, though, we had some really cool students. I never really taught high school, so it was also a learning curve for me. Um, and then we had a student... I, that was my first time also learning about the certifications. You know, I've been a graphic designer for 20 years at this point, but, you know, I never really did the certifications in that, you know, perspective in a high school. And so what ended up happening is that we, I took a chance and, you know, this ninth grader had some really spectacular work. It was work that I let him develop in class, not really one of the projects we were doing, but he wanted to create his own characters in a comic book. Um, and so he used to come during lunch, you know, and he would, you know, I said, okay, well, let's try. And then I taught him some typography skills and he submitted the work. And we had like maybe 20 students submit that year. And then he ended up getting into the show, I mean, into the competition. And it was, uh, he was like top 13 in the country, right? For a ninth grader. And that was in year one. And then we continued on to year two. And then the competition, you know, was during COVID and it was online. And then we had a student that was in the top 10 online. Fast forward to last year was our fourth year in the program. So our first senior class that was with me for four years. And we ended up having the only six students in the competition last year. And so there's a purpose behind me telling you and sharing this information. We went to the competition in Texas last when at Certified last year um, with the only six students from Florida. And it was from one school. And that was our school. And one of them ended up, she was second in the country. So all the students that entered, we went to California to the world championship. There was 27 countries and we won the Adobe championship, the world championship uh, in our first four years of the competition and us being there. So which brings me to rigor, right? How do we just not teach to certifications, but how do we apply the things that they're learning in the software and teaching them the programs? So academic rigor is a creation of lessons that challenge students. Academic rigor means setting high rigorous academic standards for students. They help students to develop skills like critical thinking and practical application and more. Um, you know, and we all, I'm sure we all are familiar with the Khan Academies, Brain Buffet, G-Metrics, LearnKey, but those things are just to practice for an exam, right? It's not, it's the resources for that exam because we all have those, you know, metrics that we need to meet. However, really tying what we're doing to those exams into real world connections, the soft skills with the curriculum, right? Um, Canvas, you know, I don't know how many of you use Canvas as part of teaching, um, you know, resources, but Canvas also is a good project-based management for your lessons. Um, we incorporated Canvas throughout the district this year. 
Um, and so, you know, those things and, and really bringing the community into the classroom. So I kind of want to share because I'm a very visual and I'm sure if you're in this room, you guys are very visual people. And so I wanted to share some of our student success stories and pictures and then open it up for questions because we have some really cool stories about building. These are the kids who helped me build a program four years ago. And, you know, they did these really cool murals around the school. The designs were implemented. It was our collaboration with our AP art teacher as well. So building the community and the relation. Rigor is a, the big message here is building trust with the students and the why. The why that they're, why are we in this class? Why are we doing this work, right? The students want to be part of something. They want to be part of something important. They want to feel important. They want to be heard. They want to express themselves. Um, and, and that in itself kind of creates their success, right? So giving them the freedom to kind of express what they want and help you build something in the process. Um, and, and this is kind of how we ended up building a really strong program. These were the six students that were with us last year at the certified competition. Um, and, you know, they have to qualify for this competition with at least one certification. And so it's a way to really tie it together, but also the kind of work that they're putting out there and doing. Um, and then this was the body of seniors that I had last year in our first four years of opening the school. Um, and each year, they had different levels of certifications, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. Um, and then we incorporated the agency aspect. We opened up the first graphic design agency in year four, which really took them to the next level of doing the business certifications. So ESB and design for the light. Um, how do they work with customers, right? And how do they deal with a client and the whole aspect of running a graphic design agency? Because a lot of these guys, they wanted to do their own business, you know, like this, this one right here, he was actually doing commissions for $1,200. He has like 20 something thousand people following him on Twitter and he's digital painting. So he uses Photoshop to do digital painting. And when he first started with me in ninth grade, I mean, he was doing pictures that were this little because he didn't understand the difference in Photoshop between a web um, format versus a print format. So once he started learning and understanding the software, that's kind of where the rigor came in. And he wasn't able to pass the certification in year one. He's like, this is hard. I can do the work, but I can't do the certification, right? And then he ended up with like four certifications in year four um, because he then started to understand how the work is applied and how to do it. And then we went to the world championship, which was an eight hour rigorous design process. And Selma, I could not even be more proud of her. She's in college studying graphic design right now. Um, and she's also going to um, show up at Certified with me this year when we actually do our um, presentation, because I want you guys to meet her if you guys are there and you can hear her story of how she came to this country. And, you know, everything kind of evolved from that point. Rigor equals the end goal, right? And our end goal is becoming productive human beings and good people and just wanting maybe if they're, if we're teaching them graphic design, I can tell you like this kid right here, he didn't think that he could do this and he can be like designing things, right? He never thought that it could be a career because he thought he wasn't creative enough. And so he was like, you know, I don't even know how to thank you enough. They come back and they see me this year. All of them are gonna be amazing designers. Um, so I want you to 
I, this was a project that we did um, and I would like for you to listen to the conversations that these students are having. Um, and so hopefully you'll be able to hear it. I'm gonna, I, cause we didn't test the sound, but hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Um, but this was our first big client when we opened up the graphic design agency. And keep in mind, I had all of these students since they were in ninth grade, this were their senior year. Let me know if you guys can hear it. Students at Toho High School can we hear? design program teamed up with the AP students to create the school's first digital design agency. Their first client is Island H2O. They were tasked with creating photo booth opportunities for the first guests, and this one is literally my favorite. Here's a look at the creative process for this project. You guys ready? It's a big day for me, so we're going to like the seniors. It's the biggest one. It is the first thing you see when you walk in the park. It's two months. Ronnie, Miguel, Selma, and Angelica can now be like the finished designs around the H2O Live water park. I'm kind of like, you know, we're kind of nice and we're doing our work like this. At the start of the school year, Ms. Mo has and her digital design seniors hit the ground running to create a graphic design agency. One where students could gain graphic design experience while learning about the business side of the industry. Island H2O Live quickly became their first client. Okay. 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 Live Hong Kong is an island, so the first thing I thought of is I, I mean, my favorite thing is coconuts, so I just decided I might as well do a coconut. The seniors were given about a week to create their design. Once that phase was complete, students had to pitch their designs to Island H2O Live executives. Well, I was inspired by the movies and cartoons where, you know, how they paint on the walls to make it look realistic, like the walkthrough. That's kind of what inspired me there, and I made it to look like a walk in aquarium. Basically, the nice at first, so I was like 421. I was extremely nervous. I love like it. They even like it. It's really good. This is like, you know, it's going to be nervous. It's going to be different. So we challenge the students to do something different. Do you want something that fits with who we are? That's what they deliver. And boy, did they deliver. Selected students had to take their feedback and make alterations to their designs. There's going to be people for um, tall people and short people being able to, you know, take a picture with it. So when they told me to bring up, up um, down the straw, I never thought of that. Students then had to work with Miss Atkins' AP art students to turn their digital design into a mural. They sit on a projector and projected it onto the walls. Trace it and paint for that. You have to pick our colors, maybe mix, find our brushes, and then from there on, it's just basically um, filling out, coloring, but also making sure that it looks good. Michelle is involved in her design in APR, so she gets to help on both sides of the process. Like the free range that the design has, it's basically me putting my ideas onto the page, but I also like executing other people's ideas and like seeing it come to life. She says this experience taught her the importance of open communication and making sure that everybody's on the same page, especially on like bigger projects like this, where like if one person messes up, the whole entire thing is messed up. The excitement of today masks the stress of the last two months. <laughs> this has prepared us to do things quickly and do good things for them too. And in some cases, solidified students' decision to pursue a career in graphic design. The main thing that I learned is that you really do want to do this for a living. So it's a traditional environment. Do this for kids. I really not want to look through this one day professionally. To get my degree in graphic design, and I want to become a creative director. Moving forward, Ms. Mohes and Ms. Atkins will provide the students with even more opportunities. So they can learn about running an agency. We're going to be starting to uh, graphics and t shirts and etc. Uh, with my 
three digits on a four glass. And it's going to be a very fun experience. We're going to bring our skills definitely to the test and just, and just bring out our, our skills to the world, and to, to the school, basically. <laughs> digital design program to incorporate the agency into their curriculum. But so I'm, I'm gonna, we'll come back and maybe, you know, answer some questions because that was a huge project for us. Um, and as you can see, like these kids were so passionate about what they were doing. And at this point, they all had all the certifications they needed, right? But now they're executing it and applying the work in Photoshop and in Illustrator and being able to have that conversation with a client big as Island H2O because they're one of our big water parks here in, in um, Orlando. And so visually, I kind of want to go into what's happening this year in current times. This, this student right here, um, they've all submitted, we had, they were all excited this year, all levels from design one, two, three, and four, because we have the entire pathway now built out. And so this student was in design one last year, now they're in design two as a 10th grader. And I tasked her with doing Janet Jackson because I love Janet Jackson. <laughs> and, um, you know, look at the artwork. I, I kind of did a screenshot here for you guys with Adobe Illustrator, right? And some of the techniques that we taught here was transparencies, you know, they can use basic shapes. So when they look at an image, right, they're looking at shapes inside of Illustrator because that's what Illustrator is. It's all about the shapes, right? Um, and then even in Photoshop, if they're coloring things in Photoshop, but primarily these images that I'm going to show you here is Adobe Illustrator. This one is another 10th grader and they were tasked with recreating movies, their favorite movie poster or their favorite movie by, um, and I gave them a list of artists. So different graphic designers from the 70s, 80s, you know. So this student picked Art Chantry. So they had to research the artist, come up with a sketch, in, and then they executed the final project in Adobe Illustrator. Um, and so this project was kind of the first project we did in quarter one. This was then quarter two because they learned the gradient mesh technique, the transparency technique, and then these were the line works. And um, then this one was our chantry as well. The one thing that we changed or that I changed with this project was the typography um, because I wanted to, we wanted to, to really hammer in from 10th grade this year, the use, the proper use of typography skills. Um, and how that actually is applicable. This one was inspired by Saul Bass. Um, and then we have this one was inspired by also Saul Bass. He actually drew the characters from um, the Predator. And then he found this really cool font and then he modified it in different ways. Um, this one was Spider-Man inspired by Shepard Fairey. Um, and we kind of talk through of these artists too, which is really digging into the rigor, which is the research part of it, right? Because they had to look at these artists, to read up about the artists, look at the artists' work, but not be overly inspired to steal that work. They had to come up with their own design with their favorite movie. And I think they lived up to the expectations because um, this is probably year five, and this is some of the best work I've seen in like the five years, you know. This one, she she did a Disney-inspired um, Snow White, um, and I really like the, the fonts that she chose on here. I think it worked really well. This was also Saul Bass. Um, and I want to kind of walk you through here, because this is like current day, what, what's happening in the last six months with us. Um, and I was talking to Hannah earlier, um, 
Like I, I, I feel like the stories behind the pictures are important to get the bigger picture of what we, we were trying to accomplish and how you can do this in your settings, right? So when I say we open a graphic design agency at our school, it doesn't mean that it's a separate entity from my classroom. It's an extension of my class because my class has computers, we have a computer lab, but we also have like a collaboration space and which we just call it our graphic design agency, but it's just another classroom. Um, and so this year we had a lot of visibility since we won the world championship from representative Darren Soto. He represents this area here. So he is, you know, we were honored this year by him for Women's History Month. We He came to see the kids work. He's going to be hiring them to do more work within the community. We had one of our seniors actually win a um, the student jury uh, award for best of show at Valencia College. These are some new projects that we instituted um, and I can share those with you. These are the typography books that we're doing to hammer in more typography skills. Then um, this picture right here up in the corner here, you, you see these are teachers. So a couple cool things that we did this year, which we really worked hard with what, with our district office was to, from Valencia College, give free professional development offerings to the teachers in our school district. And so they were able to get PD points to come to Valencia to learn Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. So this was our first year kind of piloting a, um, a, a professional development for teachers where they can learn kind of what we're doing and like how to execute these types of projects because every single thing in the projects are part of the certification exams, right? But the kids don't want to do a test. I tried it. They don't want to just take a test. They want to create cool things. They want to do things that mean something to them. And that makes them pass the exam, right? So that was in my head like year one. I don't know how to give these kids this test because I don't like to take tests. I don't even know how I have a master's degree, right? Like, I don't want to be a school person. I want to be someone who does things. And that's what the kids want to do. Um, and then this one here, this picture, you'll see, I wish I would, I could have had it a little bit closer, but, um, well, let me talk about this one in the end. This is Arts Alive. It's a huge project between, um, all of our arts, uh, programs in the school. So although we are CTE program, the collaboration between CTE and arts is really strong within our program. And, you know, the, the AP art teacher, she also, um, teaches at Valencia with me. So we, we collaborate this year collectively. We had 11 students that got into Arts Alive, which is a local Local show here and our seniors can win scholarships. One of our students um, won um, an Apple computer um, and so we were really proud of him and two others won scholarship checks. So it's a huge showcase um, and this happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, this one here is our AP Dr. Harris. He um, he, he kind of came to me and he's like, well, you know, we, I have this uh, 5k that I'm thinking about doing for the school, because he is involved with some nonprofits that raise money for Haiti and Jamaica, they have orphanage there, and they raise funds for the kids. So this was our first year implementing PMI certification, which is the project management certification. And we're the first school that's doing project management in our district. And so I, when he was talking to me about marketing the event, I said, you know what? Why don't our seniors project manage the entire event? This would give them the practical knowledge of PMI instituted because at this point, all my seniors have Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and both business um, certifications. So I figured 
they can add a sixth one this year for their graduation. Let's do project management. So now let me, I, I, I'm so excited to tell you about this because this only happened like within the last two weeks here and they already locked down the food trucks. Today, they gave me a full brief on everything. They did a walk, a tour of the walk. They planned out all of the water stations with the ROTC team. They locked down the food trucks. Ended up, we only wanted 10% profit back from the food trucks for the, for the fundraiser. They ended up getting 20%. <laughs> and I was like, okay, uh, we'll take it. Um, so they locked down the food trucks. They also negotiated a little bit with our, with Dr. Harris. Well, if each student and each club on campus and the athlete program, because we have a lot of sports at our, our thing, if everybody buys a ticket for $3 and the event is four hours, can we give every student four hours of volunteer time and you know for buying a ticket you know they already spent their money they'll bring their family it'll be a fun family day um but they can also earn four hours of volunteer time because it's for a good cause and he agreed to it and he said yes so that is now part of the, their marketing strategy to sell the tickets because that's the only thing they got everything else on lock so Today made my heart smile. So that's why that picture is in there because this is all happening like right now. And since we're the first school to do project management this year, it just kind of ties everything into the agency, into the rigor of what they're doing and kind of just a showcase. The other thing is this kid right here in this picture, this also happened yesterday. So you'll see me wearing my Take Stock in Children shirt. Um, so I have been this girl's mentor in Take Stock in Children for the last four years. And she's a senior this year. And, you know, she doesn't really have a good home life. And, but she excelled in design and she didn't know that she can excel in design. And so, um, We've often partnered with Telemundo, this young lady right here is from Telemundo. And um, she called me a couple of weeks ago and she, this lady has a nonprofit organization that they do um, quinceaneras. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Cause I don't speak Spanish, but the 15 year old big birthday party, you know, it, it, and she does them for students who can't afford or, you know, and they also have a program that they teach young women to have self-confidence and things in their self. So she really wanted, they wanted to open it up as a competition with our students. But I, I asked her, I said, like I have this one student who is in this program with me and she's an amazing, you know, kid. And I know she's never had a quinceanera before. Like, you know, I've never, I know she didn't have like any of these things growing up and um, she can do all of the work and would she be able to be invited to have this birthday party as well, you know, since she's never had it. So, I mean, they came yesterday to actually see the work. So we're doing like uh, different flyers for them, different marketing strategies for them to launch the event. Um, and she's also redoing their logo. So she met with them yesterday. Um, and so, and the conversation, she was just not even like aware that she was having that level of conversation with these people, you know? So now she is also seeing that this is something that she can do for a living. Um, and I think that was all of the pictures there. So then this is some other work that I kind of wanted to share. Um, you know, these were some uh, where the typography was a little bit, you know, um, all of these were in the best of best of Osceola County this year. They were in the museum for a couple months. And then we've now entered all of these pieces into the National Adobe Competition for this year. So tons of really cool projects, new album covers. We did a new album cover design this year. Um, 
instituting, these are my seniors here. These are all senior work this year where they're taking the movie poster to a whole nother level of um, digital painting in like actually creating the things like this one right here is he created a sketch in uh, Procreate because he has an iPad. And then we brought the Procreate file into a PSD file, which is Photoshop. And then he was able to bring it, do the, all the shading, the type treatment. Um, and he's also in AP art. So he's an artist at heart, but he is going to be a graphic designer. Same thing with this one. All of this was done in Procreate and then we brought it into Photoshop to do the final touches and cleanups and like the shadings and everything on it. Um, this is also a Photoshop piece. Um, he's also a senior this year. This is one of the pieces from Brissette, the girl from TikTok. Um, so some really cool work this year, guys. And when I talk about rigor, you know, see the potential and find the unique strengths in every student. And I thought that, you know, I know this was a graphic design session, but I, I feel like I, I didn't want to sit here and show you Photoshop and Illustrator because I know that you probably know some of that. And that's stuff that I can have one-on-one -on -one time if you wanted to reach out to me. Those are my two emails. We can have a whole one-hour session for free. That's fine. I can teach you Photoshop and Illustrator all day long if you want. Um, but I wanted to really showcase and tie together how you apply the work and then they pass all these certifications and then they want to strive for more and then they want to be able to really put into practice what they're doing and have it mean something to them. So that's my spiel today. <laughs> um, hopefully, I don't know if you guys have questions or, you know, maybe anything that you want to talk about here. And, and because I kind of showed you a lot with the video, especially, and how we kind of tied all that in together last year. So I'm open to any questions that you might have. Can you guys still hear me? Yes, no. Hi. Um... My name is Ethel. You can see I'm Ethel from I'm from Arizona. Hi. I'm over, I'm like so you know blown away by you know everything you're able to do with the kids. My main thing is how can I do this with a two year program? You can every, definitely definitely do it for two years because we started. Let me take you all the way back here. We started with year one. I had, had no idea what was happening, <laughs> you know, because this was my first year at the school. Um, and so if, do you teach like design one, design two? That's it, just design one and two. And I only get, I have, um, I have four sections of graphic design one, which we have to teach, you know, all the uh, three platforms, you know, in design, Photoshop and, and Illustrator. Right. And then they, do their this is career tech ed and they have to do their certification the second year so the second year we spend um doing a lot of projects we do get a chance to do a lot of projects but they're focusing on their career tech ed certification and then we we test for you know this third report adobe um illustrator photoshop but they're just I just really need more time with them in each one yeah. of the softwares because I just don't have enough time for yeah. them to delve more deeply into yeah. each one so they can start to spread their wings. I wish, you know, I it's like they need enough. So like after, like you have, after they pass the test, because right. when they take the test, they leave. Right. There's nothing after. You now, know, does your state, does your state standards go to more than two? No. Okay, so our state standards go to four because um, like with our program here, they earn college credits into the Valencia program, right? Because so that's kind of how we built it into, but there is four years built into the Florida state standards. So now, so which is kind of where we ended up um, like in design one, 
because um, the Florida Department of Ed changed the the way that we do the certifications last year because you know I I don't know you know the folks up in the, the who is making those decisions don't really understand the process right but they are like they bundled Photoshop and Illustrator now so the kid has to pass both of those to earn their, you know, so they have individual certifications, but it doesn't count towards our acceleration credit or our career tech thing until they earn two. So the design one teacher, so I was teaching all levels, but then we earned another teacher. So she is now split between design one and photography, because we also incorporate photography into our program. And so she teaches the certification and how to fundamentally use the software in design one. And by the end of the, so the semester one, because we have four quarters. Do you guys have four quarters? Yeah, but my, my question is, so they can't compete unless they've, until after they've passed the ACA, is that correct, what I'm saying? Correct, correct. But There's can you not do it in year one? So and no, we can't. We cannot certify in year one. We can only certify at the end of year two. Oh. And that's when they that's leave. Fair. So that's why I'm trying to get, so, you know, this actually will not apply to Arizona schools because that's um, all of Arizona. Well, maybe it's something you can change, you know, if it might be something that, hey, this state is doing this can and it's working, can we maybe change some things with the way that the state operates, you know, because sometimes they do take, you know, maybe if you were to put forth that, and we could do that as a sidebar conversation, you know, if you email me, and uh, we can maybe kind of see how we could do that, because it would be beneficial if a student can, you know, certify in year one, and then they, maybe they could do the illustrator certification in year two, um, and even in design, because I don't go to in design until year three, because wow. that's when we do. That is so ideal. That is so ideal. That's what I always said. That would be the best case scenario, just give each, you know, software a year. And then yeah. the fourth year, they get to spread their wings and they right. have, you know, real strong knowledge of, of the tools. Yeah. But it feels like we're doing boom, 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 gone. But now can you, you can still enter them to the competition because last year we had entered Selma, all the kids every year, but the seniors, they have to enter the competition before they graduate. So, but the seniors have already taken the ACAs. Yes. So, okay. So we can't enter until we take the, that's like the bottom line though. Oh, but yeah, yeah. because they need at least one certification. So they don't need both or three of them. They only need one. So if they're doing really good work like this, you know, that could be something. But we can we can chat about this. Email me. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe I'll take a look at it and maybe see how we can support and help. I have no problem into looking and helping, you know, because now we're in year five. So I'm really trying to hammer out all the kinks and, you know, because we're starting back over our four year process. So like from design one from last year is now with me design two, and then we kind of progressed from there. So, I mean, we can still share the work with you. I can share what we're doing and how we're doing it and the projects that we're using, um, you know, because it's just, and, and even with the agency part of it, it's just part of my class. Yeah. You know, we just try to bring in real life work into the classroom where it makes it more real for them and, and to showcase that they can do something. Okay, thank you. I'll definitely but email me, email me and, and we, we can figure it out and work through it. Thank you. Yeah. And well, hopefully US certified. One thing I do want to touch on for the uh, US National Adobe competitions is that um, yes, yeah, students only are required to have uh, certification in one of the um, Adobe um, uh, programs, and then um, they can compete up to the age of 21. So as long as their certification is still good, 
and they can submit an original project that perhaps they created in their learning before the certif before they certify, they're still eligible to apply um, for the competition. But do they still have to be a student in my class? They have to have been affiliated with a school. So if they're going on to continue education, that's fine. <laughs> Because some of my students, I still have, you know, I keep in touch with them. Some of them do go on to college and some of them are in the community college. Right. So yeah, you're let me, Yeah, let me, um, I'll post in like kind of the official rules because I don't know them all by heart. Okay, it's under, they must be under 22 years of age. Um, I think must be parent or have a parent or guardian if they're under 18. Uh, I'll post the, the rules in the chat here. That way everyone can have access to them. Um, Thank you. Because they, they so, might still be able to compete with, with the structure that you have in your state. Yeah. So I like the agency piece that you were talking about, creating an agency, because we have a, a t-shirt lab and print shop. Correct. That's perfect. Yes. Printing materials. We do embroidering. We do vinyl yeah. cut. So the kids, we do sell, you know, and we have a business piece, but never really set up the design portion. We're almost giving away our designs, right. you know, so we'll, we'll design a logo for a t-shirt. We don't charge for it. We don't monetize. We monetize the t-shirt end. Right. Um, so that'd be great to set up the design piece. I'm sorry if I'm monopolizing this. No, no, no. That's, that's fine. <laughs> that's, you need but, to charge for your designs. <laughs> Through the agency, though, I, I keep in touch with my graduates because they still like to come back and screen, screen print and do things on the equipment. So right. if, I, if I'm if i still in touch with them, I can enter them what you're saying. I, they can still participate in these these other contests. So that's if they're not, but they're not registered in any, any of my classes. They just come after school and they do stuff with me. Yeah, I'll double check. Um, I'll definitely connect with you after this, but I think there still might be an opportunity there. Yeah, right. yeah. Any other questions? Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the presentation because I, I just, it, this is just a snapshot of what we're going to do at Certified, um, and you'll get to meet Salma because she's going to be there with me. Um, and, you know, being able to have an open forum and discuss. Um, and because the last time we did a format like this, and I, I did this with, uh, with, um, with Hannah, I actually demoed things in Photoshop and Illustrator. But today I, I figured I want to show, I want to show off my students' work, you know, like I feel like it ties so much into what we do and the DNA of what they want to do, but we don't know. And, you know, sometimes, and, and, and uh, Ethel, I am going to tell you this, if this was not an easy road, I might be making it sound like all sugar and spice and everything nice, but this was a lot of work. Right. And it was a lot of uh, sleepless nights to really understand the process of the Florida DOE and the CTE district and how everything works. And it took me almost a year and a half to really understand all of the dynamics working in a school district before I really dove into year two and all the while trying to really build that relationship with the kids. But the rigor part is building the relationship with the kids. I think that was the key when, you know, really understanding them and what they want and how they want to feel. And once I got that piece down, everything else kind of worked through the process and the learning pieces, you know, so we can sidebar that and we can talk about through all the, the heartache side of it because the kids don't need to see all that. <laughs> we just need to make them shine and look good, you know? Are we good? Do we have any other questions? I can't wait to see you guys in person. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, I have another question. I'm really thinking about attending the conference in June. Yeah. In Florida. Yes, that's where yes. I am. You see the beach behind me. 
Green savers here. You're coming from the island view as it is, but but what would be the benefit of me attending that if I'm not bringing any students? Emma, do you want to take that or you want me to answer? Yeah, I, we can tag team it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you you don't need a student to uh, bring to the conference um, uh, to compete in the competition that we're simultaneously running. This is truly originated for educators to um, get a sense of other uh, community with fellow educators teaching the same content to support you with classroom projects, um, uh, aid you in, in teaching certain lessons, kind of thinking about things differently. So. There's tons of breakout sessions that you can attend. Um, and we have all of those listed on our website that I'll drop the link in so you can see if there's some that um, work for you. Uh, we have lots of hands-on activities. Um, we have like a certification lab, a learning partners lab. We have um, some sponsors this year that are gonna be there from like Geometrics and, and, and other learning partners where if you have questions about any of that, you can chat with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, to learn a little bit more about it. And then, you know, because teachers don't really get the royal treatment, um, I feel like you guys do so much and, and it pays little rewards. Um, so we're all about making you guys feel special. So there's fun surprises built into everything. Um, really great swag for you and stuff you can bring back for your students. And then the cherry on top is being able to watch these students compete um, in the Adobe and Microsoft uh, US national competition. So. There's a lot of really great stuff. Um, Jenny, I know you you joined us last year, so I don't know if there's anything yeah. else you want to add to that in your experience. The first year that I actually went, it was here in Orlando. So I um I, I was just blown away. We had one student in the competition. I didn't even know what the competition was. We just kind of winged it, you know, and um but the conference itself was so beneficial, you know, because I, you get to learn all these different practices and different things from just different teachers that are teaching within the, you know, the community. And you pick up all these really cool best practices and the food was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and the food was great so and then all you get to meet all these wonderful sort of fort people um they're just all great people you know and and to make the contacts and have have a support system that you can reach out to i think was most beneficial to me being new to the school district and being new to all of this certifications so year one it was really beneficial and then we went on covid so then we kind of had to look, get on lockdown for those two years but then last year i mean it was just such a good experience being there again the kids had fun the teachers they gave us cowboy hats we were good in texas Texas, everything was big, you know? So it's just a really cool experience, Ethel. I think every teacher should attend, you know, because I, I learn and I continue to learn and grow as we grow as a program. And, and, and like things that you asked today, like just being able to maybe change your state, um, you know, maybe change their minds about having a four-year program instead of two years. You know, those are things that you can talk with someone in person and maybe we can see how we can develop something and you can have a proposal and show that, you know. So it, it's things that that we can collaborate as educators that makes us stronger. And I do have oh. one more question. <laughs> Thank, nobody else is asking. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so in the competitions, my pet peeve is because we enter, um, we're, we have to have a CTSO uh, club. So we're part of FBLA, the Future yes. Business Leaders. Mm -hmm. And um, we every year we place, um, last year we placed first place in regionals and we went to state and placed mm -hmm. second. And this year we placed second again. But my pet peeve is we don't get to see any of the other works that were submitted. And it's um, sort of like, it's, I think it's just a missed teachable moment to see right. what it was that won. So right. for your... For Adobe, do they display all of the ent entries or you just sort uh, of I, only see yes. what you? Well, when we were there, they displayed all the work. They did? Every student, yeah. Because FBLA doesn't, Skills USA doesn't. 
and I yes, the report had everything printed and the stuff was there um, because uh, I believe they also have like, you know, sponsors and partners that also kind of look at the work and judge beside. So it was on display for us to see it. Yeah. yeah, so we'll we'll have um uh, the the work printed out because we do do like a judging session um for you know measuring the creative brief and uh, accuracy and in tactical um, execution, uh, but then we'll also have a people's choice award that we do. So we like to print it out and have everyone be able to view it. And then um, we do have like a Flickr a company Flickr page where we upload works too, so people can see it there. Um, we are in the process of adding in kind of like a um, historical page to our uh, competitions website where you can see past um, projects that people have either submitted or what won for second and third place and in past competition. So that's to come, not here yet, but we're working on it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. That was really inspiring. Thank here you. On my end. I love it. I love all the projects. I love all the real world, <laughs> real world application that you're bringing in. It's fantastic. And I, thank we you. hope to see you all at Certified. It really, truly really is a, a fun event. I dropped in the chat. Um, if you're interested, just to let you know that the early bird discount, which is $100 off, does end this Friday. So it's that makes or breaks your decision. Uh, just wanted to let you guys know. But thank you all for taking the time uh, and sharing it with us. We truly appreciate having you and look forward to connecting with you all again. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys.